We should be prepared for a red month in this month, in the having month. However, we could do something out of the ordinary, something that Bitcoin has Hello everyone, as Bitcoin halving is upon us and the price is hovering at the all-time high, Steve Courtney reveals some mind-boggling charts that can help us get more profits. Subscribe now, hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. What you see on your chart right now are four white dotted lines, each representing the halving. Case in point, 2012, this dotted line is precisely when the halving happened. Fast forward to 2016, this white line is exactly when the halving happened. Fast forward four years to 2020, this white line represents the precise halving as well as this one right here. The halving that is right around the corner, quickly approaching, is right behind the closed hidden message lying in the chart back in 2012. In order for us to clearly understand the facts in the charts, especially in 2012, comparing 2012 having to this having right here, we need to break down the repeatable patterns that Bitcoin does time and time again. Let's take a quick look at what these patterns are because they will repeat time and time again. What happens is we reach a market cycle top. Once we reach a market cycle top, we start our bear market. As we start our bear market and as the bear market starts heating up, we always form a bull flag. A bull flag is represented at the top with resistance and at the bottom with support. And they are parallel channels that are pointing down. Case in point, a flag. This represents a bull flag where you have resistance at multiple touch points at the top and support at multiple touch points at the bottom. Case in point, the next time we had our market cycle top was in 2013, we did the same thing. We formed a bull flag with once again, resistance at the top, multiple touch points, support at the bottom, multiple touch points, parallel channels pointing down. Then you fast forward to the next cycle and you look at the facts. We had our market cycle top, we started to move into a bear market and we formed a bull flag. Resistance at the top, multiple touch points. Support at the bottom, multiple touch points. And case in point, we did the same thing in our most recent cycle, forming a nice bull flag. Now, every single time Bitcoin breaks out of this bull flag, with a golden cross. If you go to the daily chart and you put on the 50 MA and you put on the 200 MA, a golden cross is represented of the 50 MA moving back above the 200 moving average on the daily chart. Tilt your phone to the side and subscribe. This represents a huge shift in the momentum of the market. We had been in a bear market for multiple years. We move into this potential golden cross, which flips the market on its head and we start our bullish momentum. So the golden cross literally broke us out of the bull flag. It did so here back in 2012. Fast forward four years later, the same thing happened. We were in this bull flag for quite a long time and we broke out of it with quite literally a golden cross. Fast forward to the next four years, again, a bull flag broken out with a golden cross and fast forward to our most recent cycle, it was no different. A lot of people will say, hey, Steve, this time is different. This time is more money. There's more, there's this, there's ICOs, whatever you name it. It's generally the, the, the synopsis of the market is, hey, Steve, there's more money coming in. So it's this time is different. It's repeatable patterns time and time again. The golden cross broke us out of the bull flag every single time, every four years. Same thing happens. So we had this bull flag, we broke out of it with the golden cross. What happens after is phase one builds market structure directly on top of the bottom and phase two builds directly market structure on top of phase one and that happens as well. Now, as we get close to this halving, what you notice right on the screen are seven, not up for debate, seven indistinguishable bull candles, green candles leading into the halving. And you may say, well, we probably have seven green candles in a row quite often. Actually, no, 
The facts are the facts, and it's only happened two times, and it hasn't happened in 12 years. Those are bona fide facts. The two times that Bitcoin has had it in its entire history, where we had seven consecutive green monthly candles, the first one, you have to go all the way back here to 2010, starting in January 2010. Let's take a look, let's zoom in. So at the very beginning stages of Bitcoin, Bitcoin can barely crawl it had seven green candles in a row, and two of them are quite questionable candles. This one in March, and this one in April. Very questionable candles. This looks like the stock market where you have gaps that doesn't happen in crypto. Very questionable candles, but still we'll call them green candles. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. After the seventh candle printed, big red candle, although a bullish candle. You can see the body of this candle that wicked all the way down here, and you look at the thin body with a long wick to the downside, it tells you that there's buying pressure to the upside, and that's precisely what had followed. However, we fell in prices from the high here, and we fell all the way down 66% after that seventh candle. This is a bona fide fact. Now, if you look at the next time that Bitcoin had printed seven green candles, look no further than March 2012, when we started our green candles in the midst of phase one of the bull. So phase one of the bull, March 2012, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and our seventh candle. What happened after our seventh candle? The market had fallen from our high price and it fell about 40%. So the first time we had seven candles, we fell 66%. The second time we fell 40%. Both times were followed by big red candles. And since then, Bitcoin has never printed seven monthly candles in a row. We have printed six of them twice. We will cover that in a moment. Bitcoin is heading into a halving. We've had seven green candles in a row. Is there a chance at all that we can print eight? Absolutely. However, we need to take in consideration out of Bitcoin's entire history, including the most bullish parts of all of our history in the beginning, Bitcoin has never had eight in a row, never. There were two times we had seven, right after that we had a huge red candle. There were two times we had six, right after that a red candle. We're at seven now, could we have eight? Sure. Is it likely? Not likely. It's not likely. Just based on the facts, this is not an opinion. So when you look at it, you can say, okay, if this were a red candle, what could it look like? Well, we've got to go back and start to decode this message here. So when you look at 2012, we had their bull flag. We had our golden cross. We had phase one. We had phase two. And in the middle of phase one and two, right in the middle, we started this journey of seven green candles. Keep in mind, the first three were not very bullish. They were right inside of phase one. The fourth candle, slightly bullish, tried to break us out of phase one. It couldn't. The fifth candle is the one that took us from phase one into phase two. And then the market had our fifth, our sixth, and our seventh. The sixth candle was the most bullish candle, right? It followed up our fifth candle, which was quite literally our breakout of phase one into phase two, followed by the highest candle. And our seventh candle was not much to really look at, right? It all happened on our sixth candle. We created this high, and then we had this huge wick to the upside. And that huge wick represented people taking profits, okay? At that point, we had six in a row. We had a large wick to the upside representing critical market resistance. That wick got us to the body of this and the body of this, and we were met with heavy selling pressure. There was a lot of people that took profits at this area, hence the large wick. That's why the seventh candle didn't have a lot of momentum left. It was all taken away with the sixth candle. Leading into that eighth candle, this red one, was a small body because... We were inside of phase two. We already established our market cycle top. We had already established our market cycle bottom inside of phase two. And we were so bullish 
that this red candle was a thin body red candle. It didn't have a huge wick to the downside. Yes, we had a little wick, right? But it wasn't an extensive wick to the downside. It represented a small thin body with a larger wick to the downside, which told us that there was more buying pressure coming in at the bottom of this wick, which leading into the actual having event, we did have a green candle. Another thing to look at is this little pattern you see here, right? There are precisely four halvings in front of our eyes, one of which didn't happen yet, three of which did. The first one, green candle, 2012, fact. Next one, red candle, 2016. Next one, green candle, 2020. In other words, green candle, red candle, green candle. What do you think's coming next? What does the pattern say? So when you look at the facts, you understand, okay, back here in 2012, times were slightly different. We were moving from phase one into phase two. We were bullish, yes, although the seventh candle, not so bullish. The red candle pushed price back up, then we had the halving, then we broke out of phase two into phase three. And again, phase three flirts real hard, hard with the all-time high or makes an all-time high, and that was short-lived. Phase three was explosive, and then we were met with resistance here, and then we moved into phase four, the most explosive part of the rally. So when you look at it, you say, okay, seven green candles in a row, it's likely we're going to see a red month, but how big could this red month be? What are the clues? When you look at how high Bitcoin has rallied and how overextended the market is, especially on the weekly chart, and you look at the monthly chart was trying to move into this red zone and was met with heavy resistance, and you factor all of that in, one could say, hey, we should be prepared for a red month in this month, in the having month. However, we could do something out of the ordinary, something that Bitcoin has never seen before, something that Bitcoin could never do in its 14 year history, which is print the eighth green candle in a row. The eighth green candle in a row would literally bring us into this red zone, which would be phenomenal. Tilt your phone to the side and subscribe. This red zone should be incredibly strong resistance, which is why you've seen action already start to pivot away from it. If you just look at structurally, we had this structure here and here, which represents some resistance. We had this pivot point here and here, which further amplifies the significance of here. And then we have this pivot point from here and here, representing even further evidence that this red channel is nothing to play with. So when you take it all into consideration, I think we need to be very, very appreciative that Bitcoin has given us seven green candles in a row. For us to be greedy and expect an eighth would be unreasonable. We should expect a red candle. We should expect Bitcoin to catch its breath after having literally the strongest move in 12 years. We haven't had seven consecutive candles since 2012 leading into the halving. What's really cool about all of this data is that Bitcoin has just printed its seventh green candle for the third time in history. All three of them have happened before the halving. Two times in history, Bitcoin has printed six consecutive green candles. Both of those have happened after the having very interesting information. What is also interesting is last week, I took a look at when the exact date of the having would be. And at the time I researched it, it told me that it would happen on 420, which, you know, Grandma Betty is probably going crazy on 420. You know, Elon's probably got those tweets lined up about 420. I just looked before filming this and they changed the date. Right now it's projected to happen on April 17th. When you take all that into consideration, it's important to note the weekly chart. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Steve Courtney. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.